thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, shall we clap for Jesus. We may take our seat. I am not preaching, but let me introduce this message to you. Remember, I promise you that I'll be, you know, bringing this message from the throne of mercy. We have been crying, we have cried, fasted, being prayed for. We have, we have done everything. But we are living like slaves. We used to count money. Today, the issue is no longer like that. I talked about Zachariah. I talked about Daniel. I started with Zachariah. He remained faithful and committed to do the work of God as a priest. Despite him being, you know, barren for so many years, he did not give up. Not until one day, he was assigned to go and do his job in the house of God, as it was before. There he saw an angel at the right side of the altar. He was afraid. The Bible says that the angel said, do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your wife shall be pregnant and give you a son. And you are to call him John. He doubted. He said, how could it be? I am an old man. Not until the angel went further to introduce himself to him to say, my name is Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. So that at least Zachariah would be like, yes, oh, he's from above. Because, you know, being a man of God, you have prayed, you know, you have fasted, and you are getting old. There you become like, I think, let me continue saving Jesus. Today, I want to take you to the book of Exodus, chapter 3. My message is always talking about angels. And this is my first time to preach like this or to share the message like this. I'll just read the Bible and go and I know that there are sick people inside the church. Chapter 3, verse 1. This is the issue of Moses. Moses was not a prophet before the angel appeared to him. He did not know that he's a prophet in short. Not until the angel appeared to him to deliver the message. Whenever God Almighty wants to do something for his children, he will send his angels. He will send his messenger. That sickness you are calling that barrenness, that problem that you are calling, when the messenger of God appeared to you, know for sure that the hand has come to this Hagon. And you are there sitting down. You have been crying. Your husband is no longer with you. He has married another woman. Neither is no longer there. He has been killed by this, you know, witches and wizards or ancestral power. Jesus is aware of what you are going through. This is why this is your message. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Median, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness. And he came to a hole 
the mountain of God. Pause there. The whole the mountain of who? For me personally, that is an altar of God. You experience the same power that Moses experienced. You have tried. Men of God, you know, tried. But when Jesus appeared to you, send his messenger. It's like you breathe in and you breathe out. The hand has come to your problem. He came to Horeb, the mountain of God, meaning the place where the presence of God can be found. Moses did not know that where he was taking this, you know, a ship is the mountain. No, he was just doing his job to help his father-in-law. Verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire within the bush. The angel of the Lord, look at this again. The Israelites were treated like, in, in, in short, they, 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 they were enslaved for so many years in Egypt. They cried and cried. Others died. And they lose what? Hope. To say, I think life is like this. Moses saw that although the bush was not fire, it did not burn up. The angel of the Lord appeared to do what? Angels are not for fun or for entertainment. They will be sent to you to bring solution. He appeared so that Moses can be sent to Egypt and end that slavery from his people. Verse 3. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, listen to this. The angel appeared to him. Moses said, I think let me go near and see. Why is it that these things are not, you know, consumed by this fire? Then God saw that Moses was going very close to the burning bush. Sometimes when I look at the life that we are living, we are not living according to the promise of God. Listen to this. When the Lord saw that he had gone over, he called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come near. I mean, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals. For the place where you are, I mean, for the place where you are standing, is a holy ground. This is a problem with me. I don't know if it is within my power. Good enough, We are more of history than the presence of God Almighty. He appeared to end the agony of his people. Because of time, I'll, I'll just leave the message like this. But before, you know, I come down, let me declare this to you. He told Moses that, do not come closer. And the place where you are standing is the holy ground. A holy ground is always a solution to our problem. I mean, a place where an altar is established is a place of what? Solution. Because there you encounter the presence of God Almighty. Why is it that demons are very much comfortable sitting in the house of God? And continue destroying us. Continue killing us. Why? Why? 
Until Lesa Einstein introduced him in there, even a power he killed Remember the place where he took Mboshawa Pongoshi. The Bible says that the mountain of God. I stand here on this mountain of God to introduce. Ah, are you there? I say I stand here. If you are carrying darkness inside your body, I stand here to introduce the presence of God to your life. So that whatever situation that has been bringing you down or fighting you or tying you down must come to an end. Moses said, "Yam when a chimbiri mbiri, but if you pay the amount, I can't wait. I'm going to Egypt. Fish mule mona, fish mule umfwa. Is the time when the sangamwa mupe sech? His angels brought what? A message of what? Freedom. To say, go and take my people. Go and take them from that country. I've heard their cry. Le sadu umfwa kuri la kwen." The same message that he gave Moses is the same message I'm giving you now. I said the same message he gave to Moses is the same message that you are receiving now. Are you the one? Are you the one? Are you the one? Are you the one? You the one? Yes. Take it. I said take it. I said take it. 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 That's your body now. Moses tayde mukubombela le soko abulo kumona makaya. Tasu minyo ko abula. Ngai mani chimu sumi ni na yisi ko abula maka. Mone ni amaka ya ko alesa. But mule enda na. John said, "I can't do it. Solution. Let them listen. The solution is Uganda. You carry a solution to your family. I say you carry this power to go and defeat your enemy. In Jesus' name. Mm. Take it. Take it. Take it. Uh -huh. Remain quiet. Let me send it to you. Moses, I'm going. Because Moses had the people." I the song of a punch and the ancient and I'm sure take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. That family problem killing innocent people. Take this key, take this solution, take this panga to go and match at them spiritually. Take it. I say, take it. I say, take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Uh, take it. 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 We like to pretend. 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 Imiti ma Yesu yonse ngai ingira munga ndia kualesa tiari chiti kaka ah take it I say take it take it can interpret the chef take it 